Alright then, let's give Battletech a try, and at the same time, uh, let's give this setup for game recording a try. And my computer's not the most up to date, so I've set things a little lower to make things run smoother, especially with the screen capture going at the same time, uh, but it should run okay. So I've been playing Battletech since the, the board game I had. Battletech, City Tech and Aerotech. And it was great, you had these card standy miniatures so you didn't have to buy proper full on miniatures, you could just get the box and you, and you could play pretty much straight away. I don't think we were playing quite according to the rules, but uh, we played it, we enjoyed it. Didn't really get into the background so much, it was just purely yeah, make a mech and bash the crap out of each other. And yeah, that was fun. I also remember playing uh, it Phoenix Rebellion or something something Rebellion. Um, Phoenix Hawks, was that it? On the on the on the uh, Atari ST and that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, um, I actually managed to escape with the original chameleon uh, at the beginning that you weren't supposed to and it kind of screwed the game up in some, in some way doing that so yeah I, as far as I understand it this is back during the Inner Sphere um, succession wars and all that sort of side of things so it'll be interesting to see how that goes that's definitely my favourite period we used to have the uh, 3025 technical readouts whatever yeah, I got into it because, okay, my family was an early adopter of satellite television. We used to have this massive dish in the backyard that you'd have to physically move and uh, twist the the uh, encoder around to get different channels. I think it was Utel Sat we were getting. Um, so yeah, we had we had satellite television. And it was tuned with a dial <laughs> to the different channels, but on that I could watch Roustabout. Uh, which was a sort of collection of cartoon shows and stuff, and they had like Voltron, Robotech, Invid was my favourite. So, you know, I, I got into anime and mecha through that kind of thing. Um, so then when I saw Battletech there and recognised uh, one of the, the mecha, the Warhammer, as one of the destroids from Robotech, I had to have the game. Of course, Battletech is much more Western, it's very heavy and stompy, it's not as um, quick and high-end cinematic, I guess, the way Robotech and so on were. But still, it was it was fun, it was interesting. I'm curious how they've handled the IP conflict in this, because a bunch of the early and original Battletech mechs were lifted wholesale <laughs> out of out of Robotech, so the Warhammer was one, the Wasp uh, was basically a Veritech, um, the Marauder, which is one of my favourite mechs, was one of the Zentradi battle pods and so on, and it's obviously a big fuss and mix up with Harmony Gold and others um, about who actually owns the rights. It's a shame that Palladium screwed up like they always do with the Robotech battle game because those were some nice uh, nice miniatures and it was nice to see Palladium doing something cool for once but they've lost the Robotech license God knows where that'll turn up next DreamPod 9 I hope because at least in terms of the RPG the um, Palladium system is unsuited shall we say of House Arano, High Lady of the Oregon Reach, Protector of Coromadir, and the Sword of Restoration. But I am not a hero, no matter what the stories say. A hero would have sacrificed more, compromised less. It was always interesting how they went for this more feudal stance and the mech warriors occupying the position pretty Notice much that knights used to. You were there. 
you don't necessarily get that same sensation <laughs> while you're playing, My slamming the crap out of the stories, mechs that these are the ancient times, knights with lands and people. The Star but... League, a golden age of prosperity, upheld by the great mech warriors of old, guardians of the innocent, protectors of the peace. I always dreamed of following in their footsteps. I was too young to see the truth of things. After all, it wasn't heroism or a noble cause that won me the throne. It was hiring a mercenary, skilled enough, perhaps ruthless enough, yeah, to carry the day. Well, I guess I never really got that much into the background, but um, I, still I did have Black Widow Company, which was one of my favourite mercenary groups, and I always liked the idea of playing mercenaries, uh, of the first person but versions. Was your noble heart, uh, mercenaries was my favourite one, I think. Your actions gave us hope. But they were that all great. A hero in the eyes of uh, Eridani Light Horse, Whether Black Widow Company, it? and Cranston Snord's Irregulus. <laughs> I just love that name, Cranston That's Snord. Not too keen on restoring a monarchy. I'm a small R Republican at heart. I did write a mecha game background once that was like a futuristic retelling of the English Civil War. Maybe I should dig that idea out again. Welcome to the Oregon Reach. I'm gonna pronounce that like Oregon, I just know it. The Oregon Reach is a small kingdom in the remote periphery, a region of space that lies at the outskirts of the more densely colonized inner sphere. It is home to the Oregon Coalition, a federation organized around a parliamentary monarchy and ruled by the Arano family. For three generations under the rule of House Arano, the Oregon Coalition has remained a relatively peaceful corner of the periphery. It is here that your story begins. So I'm going to try and keep this interesting because I can't really live stream due to potato internet. That's also why I've reduced the, the uh, graphics and so on a little bit. I'll try and keep it interesting with a bit of role playing. See how that goes. Where are you from? Um, I want to be from outside so I can set my own terms, really, though Karita is uh, tempting, but still. So, we're from outside known space. Mech warriors that hail from the deep periphery are rare, but even rarer is the mech warrior who will admit to such an origin. Beyond the outermost edges of the periphery lie depths of space that remain uncharted and unknown to most of human civilization. Little is known about these regions, but they are far from uninhabited. The deep periphery is littered with abandoned colonies and small outposts, isolated from the rest of humanity. After the fall of the Star League, General Alexander Kerensky led the remnants of the Star League Defense Force into the deep periphery, disappearing from the inner sphere and from recorded history. And that's what became the clans. You are of noble birth. Boo. Though immigrants to the Oregon Reach, your family soon established a comfortable presence in a small backwater system on the edges of Oregon space. By the time you were born, your family had become the de facto ruling nobility of the system's only inhabited planet. You were the oldest child, heir to the family's titles and ancestral battle mech, an old blackjack BJ-1. <laughs> no, BJ. Uh, this is where you met Raju Mastiff Montgomery, a veteran of the Succession Wars, whom your parents hired on for a season to train you as a mech warrior. Raju was a strict but capable teacher, and you quickly became a skilled pilot under his tutelage. It was an uneventful life. Until the day after your 16th birthday, when... Exile sounds most interesting to me. Once the promising young scion of your family, you committed an unforgivable transgression and were sentenced to life in exile. You stole away with the family's ancestral blackjack and set off to find a new life to call your own. Out on your own, you fell into the life of a, well, it's gotta be pirate. Tired of living under the authority of others, you fell in with a local pirate gang in the Rimwood periphery. It was an unruly crew, but an effective one. Roaming the periphery afforded your outfit with a steady supply of poorly defended merchant caravans and supply depots to prey upon. While raids did occasionally devolve into combat, you quickly learned that successful piracy is mostly about being in the right place, at the right time, with the right threats and a good show of force. 
until years later you crossed paths with Raja Mastiff Montgomery once again. After years of roaming the frontier, your outfit's luck eventually ran out, landing you in an Oregon coalition prison. Hearing of your bad turn of fortune, Raju dragged you out of jail, giving you a second chance under his mentorship. After heavy rehabilitation, you proved your worth and were inducted into the House Arano Royal Guard. So it is that you find yourself reunited with your old mentor, preparing your ancestral blackjack for guard duty on the coronation day of the Lady Kamiya Arano. Well, that's going to go all awry, isn't it? Call sign Grimnir, which is one of the names of Odin. And uh, we'll be called Jack Doors to keep the Corvid theme going. And pronouns he. Let's go with yeah, that as a basis to build upon. Okay. makeup tattoos let's go for something piratey as a mark of his old life yep skull there we go scars should pick up something from his previous life um, side of the face. Hairstyle now. Hair is always rubbish in games and no I'm not going emo. No. And they so rarely have any decent long haired options. <laughs> Looks like some kind of not top knot bullshit. Okay now let's give him thicker eyebrows like mine. And let's try and find some decent facial hair, which is another issue. Looking at you, Destiny, with your lack of beards. No, uh, yeah, that'll do. Expression. What I'm really looking for is the DreamWorks smirk. Close enough. Complexion. I mean, noble birth and everything, so I want a fairly clear complexion, I would think. Yep, it's hair dark, eyes green, pale skin, lips as they are, makeup. Wish I would let you darken the tattoos. Okay, that'll do nicely. My Lord Tamati Arano II is dead. The Oregon Reach is left at an uncertain crossroads. Once prosperous, it is now a kingdom in decline, surrounded by powerful neighbours. Lord Santiago Espinosa, brother-in-law to the late High Lord, is convinced that the slow-moving council of founding houses must be dissolved. His proposed directive would conscript their house guard and centralise power under a single throne. However, the High Lord's heir, the noble Lady Kamiya Arano, is determined to rebuild the Reach without transforming it into an authoritarian state. She refuses to enact her uncle's directive and has rebuked his vehement pleas to reconsider. On the morning of Lady Arano's ascension to the throne, her loyal captain of the guard, Raju Mastiff Montgomery, makes preparations to escort her safely to the coronation procession that awaits in Cordia City. Mm, well, that's not going to end in an ambush, is it? Coronation Day, Arano Summer Palace, 0853 local time. The 
It looks like they've refined the system and let the computer take care of a lot of it. It seems to be a bit more granular than the tabletop system. Which is good. All things considered, it might be better than playing on the tabletop, apart from the fact that you can't really make your own missions. Command interface initiated. W A S D rotation. Okay, all good. Yeah. Okay, Grimnir, I had the Espinosa refit yards push the repairs on your blackjack. Looks like it's all in one piece, but we should run some diagnostics on it just to be sure. Standard field tests, you know the drill. More importantly though, I want to tell you more about the job I brought you here to do. Now do me a favour and get that battle make moving. Let's see if there are any kinks in the actuators. Okay, training wheels. How to play. I'll come right out and say it, kid. I wasn't completely honest with you the other day. There's gonna be more to this job than escort duty. I brought you here because there's something wrong in the capital. It's been too quiet since High Lord Tamati's funeral, and I'm worried about Lady Camilla's safety during her coronation procession, which will end in an ambush. Anyway, looks like your actuators check out. Let's conduct a weapons test. Target one of those burnt out old urban mechs and open fire. Urban mechs are the tiny ones from City Tech, if I remember correctly. Like I was saying, I can't prove anything, but my gut tells me something's off. And a warrior trusts their instincts. No point wasting on it. Enemy mech destroyed. Good shot. Your guns are in working order at least. Thanks, I guess. Not exactly a difficult target. I've been training Lady Arano since she was 14 years old. She can be naive at times and proud, but I have no doubt that she'll be a just and effective ruler. It's on us to see her safely to Cordia City. I'll rest easier once she's in the capital, with her cousin Victoria by her side. Lady Victoria? Well, she's only been training under me for a single season, but she's already shaped herself into one of the strongest mech warriors I've ever seen. Reminds me a lot of you, truth be told. Only I lack tits. Come on, Raju. Anyway, we should run a check on your targeting computer. You see that drone over there? The one moving through the tree line? Put some hurt on it for me. And then, when it turns, take it out with a rear angle shot. After it's down, we'll keep moving. Like a right new so we got a moving target now. Was a good a moving target in cover. So. Target. Give it some of the auto cannons just because I want to see them. All weapons committed. Easy enough. I'm glad that they've got vehicles in it as well. Some of the tanks could really rival battle mechs. Nice shot. Now, I don't know how familiar you are with Oregon politics, but the Reach was badly shaken by High Lord Tamati's death. It needs a smooth transfer of power, and Cameo belongs on the Cormorant throne. Cormorants? Why? As a heraldic animal, that just sucks. Go ahead and fire up your jump jets, kid. I want to see you descend this cliff face. Aim for that patch of ground there near the edge of the lake. Now, I hardly ever use jump jets in the board game because they were a bit rubbish. Too much heat, not enough reason to use them. Okay. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Jump jets build a lot of heat, and that was more than your engine could handle. Head on into that water. We need to get you cooled off. 
Oh, cool. They kept the water cooling effect. The mechs in this don't quite feel heavy and stompy enough. Warning, plasma leak detected, jump jet malfunction, jump jet systems damaged, system inoperable until repaired. Oh, for the love of all the gods, this is what I get for insisting on a rush job. Not that I had much of a choice. The Espinosa refit yards were backlogged like you wouldn't believe. It looked like they were trying to process every single Royal Guard mech in time for the coronation. Hmm, suspicious. There isn't any time to get your jets replaced, so we're going to have to make do without them. Go ahead and take that mech down with a melee attack. I want to be sure nothing else is going to break down on your blackjack before we take it out on the Cormorant Road. Melee, you realise I don't have any arms, Raju. What do you want me to do, kick it? Melee hardly ever came up, but I seem to remember you could pick up destroyed arms and stuff and use them as clubs. I don't know whether this allows for that. Uh, move. Melee. Target. And... Attack. Engaging. Okay, that kind of was a kick, I guess. Good hit. At least that's solid. Alright, one last test. I want you to take your blackjack up to a sprint and evade my attack. Okay, because you're harder to hit when you're moving fast. If something goes wrong today, I want to know that your mech can maneuver. So that's more heat but lets you move faster, alright. And he misses. Congratulations, Grimnir. Your blackjack's as combat ready as it can be, given the circumstances. For what it's worth, I hope that my suspicions turn out to be unfounded, and we end the day having a good laugh about what a paranoid old man I've become. But if not, that I know you'll be ready. I'm betting you're right to be paranoid, Raju. Alright, it's time to move out. Lady Arana was waiting for us at the mech bay. An impressive display, Sir Raju. Of course, this mech warrior was a student of yours. I'd expect them to know their way around a cockpit. Thank you, my lady. Royals. Grimnir, allow me to introduce Camilla Arano, the soon-to-be High Lady of the Oregon Coalition. Is Lady Victoria on this channel? For the time being, my father has summoned me to the Picton docks. I have a fleet inspection and a tour of the family refit yards to preside over before the coronation. Behold, the responsibilities of a noble daughter, a fount of tedium that never runs dry. Okay, while well, we're getting the sarcasm there, Victoria. I know the feeling, cousin. By this time tomorrow, I'll be responsible for the entire reach. Give my best to your father, and don't be late for the tourney. The gambling dens are already taking bets on how long it'll take me to cripple that customised monstrosity, you pilot. <laughs> Bold words, cousin, but the only victory they'll be celebrating is mine. You may be ascending the throne today, but my Kaga is more than a match for the family heirloom that you call a battle mech. And in the arena, I reign supreme. I'm getting a sense of jealousy between these two. <laughs> we'll see, cousin, we'll see. At any rate, I will see you at the tourney grounds. So, Raju, I'm going to go when you are. Overland, along the Cormorant Road, as is the Arano tradition. Traditions make you vulnerable to ambushes. Just, just, just saying. I, Kamiya, will get you there in one piece. Grimnir, fall in behind me. Yes, sir. And remember what I told you. Mission successful. What did he tell me? Not to wank in the cockpit? It's called the cockpit. I'll do what I want. I remember the Oregon Reach of old. The time of the great expansion. 
I was just a boy then. Proudly we went forth, bringing the light of our coalition to so many systems. And for what? To see our great kingdom slowly waste away? Year after year, the Council deliberates while our economy falters, and the wolves bay at every door. Pretty sure our that dropship design turns up in Traveller or Traveller 2300 as well. It can go no further. We are here today because if Lady Orana will not act, someone must. I know what I'm asking. You will face former comrades, or even loved ones, on the battlefield. I take up arms against my own niece. But remember, today we sacrifice so that tomorrow we can return our kingdom to its proper glory, to its proper strength. So should you fall tonight, know that you did so as true heroes of the Reach. To your station! Make Oregon great again. I actually prefer this RT cutscene style to the full on CG. Coronation Day, Cordia City outskirts, 1322 local time. I'm going to miss this, Raju, the clarity of purpose that I feel in the cockpit of a battle mech, the simplicity of it. But there they are, just up ahead, the city gates and my future, all laid out before me. Yeah, right after we get ambushed, my lady. Wait, what's that smoke? I'm not saying I told you so. A guard post, one of the small ones that dot the roads leading into the capital. But the emergency band's been quiet all morning. I haven't heard anything about any fire. Because it's a friggin' ambush, Raju. This is damned odd. I don't like it. Kid, keep your head on a swivel and be ready for anything. Here we go. Monster misbehaving, planets needing saving, situations graven. I'll form the head, the enemy is clever. We're smaller, but whatever. When we put it together, I'll form the head. Y'all can do the training, swing energy machete. If combinations ready, I'll form the head, I'll form the head, I'll form the head. 